Prepare yourself to journey into the dark, twisted mind of one of history's most notorious serial killers, Bruno Lutke. This infamous German murderer was known for his gruesome crimes against women and children, but perhaps even more shocking than his brutality was the fact that he had been castrated as a child. In this video, we'll delve into the disturbing details surrounding Lutke's life and death, from his troubled childhood to his eventual capture and brutal demise at the hands of Nazi authorities. So buckle up guys, this is one story that will leave you both horrified and fascinated in equal measure. The German psychopath Bruno Lutke was one of the five most violent psychopaths of the 20th century according to the Guinness Book of World Records. In the 1920s, he began killing, but Lutke's crimes were at their worst in the 1940s when he was sterilized against his will. After he was caught in 1943, he admitted to killing 84 people. It's important to give credit to the German police for how hard they worked to find a serial killer even when things were hard. Not right away, though. In May 1930, the body of a woman thought to have been killed by Bruno Lutke was found near the town of Rietz. Elsa Ladwig, who was 32 years old, was found dead in a pond near the town of Altenvedel. When the peasants found the body, they were shocked not so much by the murder, but by how cruel it was. But trying hard to find the killer didn't work. The murder case slowed down over time, and then it went to Glukari. In the spring of 1941, people thought about the murder. In April, the body of 24-year-old Kat Munz was found near the town of Koenigs Wusterhausen, which is a suburb of Berlin. In May, the body of Mina Gutramen was found in Berlin. Two days later, the bodies of the Umans, who ran a small cafe with their spouse, were found. Even though the reason for the last murder was pretty clear, a lot of food, alcohol, and cigarettes were stolen from the cafe, the forensic investigation found that all of the murders had something in common. All of the dead women were raped after they died. The Reich Chancellery decided it was important to find the crazy person, so SS Sturmbannfuhrer Togoski was put in charge of a special commission to catch him. The group's leader was a real Aryan and a respected former member of the Nazi party. He wasn't a police officer. Pride and aplomb didn't let the investigation get help from experienced detectives. Well, we're the elite and we're doing serious business, and these cops on the ground pick. Because the group's job was to check on foreigners, half-bloods, and other third-grade people. This kind of investigation didn't lead to any answers, and the bodies of women who had been killed in a certain way kept showing up. It got so bad that people in charge of the Imperial Security Service, where Togoski worked, told him directly that if the killer wasn't found as soon as possible, he and his group would all be sent to the Eastern Front. A police officer with a lot of experience dealt with the case in a very professional way. He looked not only at all the cases that the special group looked into, but also cases that were similar. The policeman said that in the last 10 years, there have been nonviolent crimes in Kopernik. There weren't that many of them. The Berlin suburb was pretty small, and after the general mobilization of men was announced, Franz was sure the killer was a man. There weren't that many of them left. A long-running case against a local man named Bruno Lutke caught the attention of the police. It turned out that Lutke is always in the forest near Kopenik, where he steals wood and has been caught more than once. Franz had feelings for this guy. Since he knows his way around the forest well, he could have seen Reznor's murder, which was found in the forest. But the local police chief didn't expect that. On March 18, 1943, Lutke was put in jail. He broke up with her almost right away and admitted to killing five people all at once. After that, Lutke moved to Berlin and started working with them carefully as Germans do. In the next three months, Lutke talked about killing 84 women between 1924 and 1943. The police accused him of only 51 killings. He was sent to the Criminal Medical Institute in Vienna on Himmler's orders, where different tests were done on Lutke to show that born criminals can be found even in the higher Aryan race. Lutke died on April 8, 1944, but it is not clear why. It looks like the research wasn't a waste of time. Thank you for watching the video till the end. If you found this content informative and thought-provoking, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel for more chilling stories from history.